Atoms are the smallest particles that make up elements. They contain electrons, neutrons and protons. Electrons are negatively charged. Bro! Holy! What? What are you doing? Uh, I'm studying my exams tomorrow. Is that a... A... Chemics book? Um... What? My name's Pranav and you're watching Science is Dope. So recently I made a thread, I made two threads on Twitter exposing bullshit. One on Sadhguru's analysis of the model of the atom. That's why textbooks never ever interested me because when I look at it, it looked dumb. And another on Dr. B.M. Hegde and what he said about the wave particle nature of an electron. And all this is because we believed blindly Western science is correct. And ours is wrong. Both the threads went viral. Uh, viral for a page my size, I guess. Uh, I'll leave links down below. You can go check out the tweets for yourself. But uh, when I saw the response to those tweets, uh, I realized what kind of potential uh, the idea had. And I realized it required a much more in-depth video analysis of what they both said and how they both hilariously wrong. We'll also look at why they're doing this. First, Dr. B.M. Hegde. Despite being scientifically trained, Dr. B.M. Hegde amazes all of us by getting basic 9th grade physics spectacularly wrong. But fortunately for him, he does this in front of an audience that doesn't really question him. Let's watch and analyze. J.J. Thompson in 1906 got the Nobel Prize for saying that electrons are particles. He was the director of the Cavendish Institute in Cambridge. 30 years later, his own son, J.G. Thompson, gets the Nobel Prize for saying that they are waves. Father said they are particles, son said it is waves. And er Erwin Schrodinger gets it for, he said they are waves and particles at different times, vehicles. See? And all this is because we believed blindly Western science is correct. And ours is wrong. Now, when you listen to what he says, even if you've studied this in school, you'll feel like he's kind of right. I mean, J.J. Thompson, his son, Irvin Schrodinger, were all kind of involved in this debate. And this wave-particle dual nature of the electron did come into question. And if you haven't learned all this, you'll feel like these scientists don't really know anything. I mean, one guy says one thing, another guy says he's wrong, a third guy comes and says they're both wrong. Uh, they don't really know what they're doing and the Nobel Prize Committee just sits there cheering them all on by giving them Nobel Prizes. I mean, what's happening? But if you look a little closer at the nuances of the story, you'll see many incorrect details that have been deliberately put in there to paint a very negative picture of science. Let's take that closer look and figure out what they are. J.J. Thompson in 1906 got the Nobel Prize for saying that electrons are particles. But did he do? Let's look at the Nobel Prize website and see what it says. In recognition of the great merits of his theoretical and experimental investigations on the conduction of electricity by gases. Hmm, doesn't say anything about the electron here. So how did he discover the electron? Well, one of the experiments he did while studying the conductivity of gases was the famous cathode ray experiment in which he had this setup and these rays were produced by the cathode or the negative electrode plate uh, in the experiment and he subjected the rays to uh, various electric and magnetic fields to see what would happen. Hey, it's deflecting towards a positive plate. Must mean that it's composed of something that's negatively charged. And the deflection in electric and magnetic fields can also tell us the charge to mass ratio of something. So he found that out. And he also noted that the rays could travel further in air than something the size of an atom would. So it had to be smaller. He also changed the material of the cathode plate to see how that would affect the rays. No change whatsoever. Uh, the exact same particles with the exact same charge to mass ratio were produced. He concluded from all this that atoms had to be made up of these negatively charged building blocks and the particle was made later named 
the electron. But did he say it was a particle though? Not really, because there was no real question as to was it something other than a particle. There was no need of explicitly stating that it was a particle. Particle was the default. So Hegde's first statement here is not correct. J.J. Thompson did win the Nobel Prize. He did discover the electron, but that's not all he won the Nobel Prize for. And definitely not for saying that it was a particle. Let's see the next statement. 30 years later, his own son, J.G. Thompson, gets the Nobel Prize for saying that there are waves. It's not J.G. Thompson, it's G.P. Thompson, and he did win the Nobel Prize. But for what? In 1924, a French physicist uh, named Louis de Broglie, uh, all you French nerds, please correct my pronunciation down in the comments. Now, this guy, he said that everything had a particle as well as a wave nature. Not just randomly, he said this on the basis of evidence, on the basis of experiments. All matter, including both subatomic and macroscopic, uh, if they're moving, that is, if they have a momentum, then they also have a wavelength given by this equation. What G.P. Thompson did was that he showed that electrons, when passed through a nickel crystal, uh, produced a diffraction pattern. And diffraction is a property of a wave. This way, he confirmed what De Broglie said uh, by showing that electrons had a wave nature. Now, this does not in any way invalidate what J.J. Thomson said because G.P. Thomson showed that electrons had a wave nature in addition to their particle nature and he won the Nobel Prize for this in 1937. They did not contradict each other like what P.M. Hegde is implying. Now comes the part where I bust this wide open by showing you how B.M. Hegde has been misleading you. Let's look at the third thing he said. Father said their particles, one said his waves. And er Erwin Schrodinger gets it for, he said their waves and particles at different times, wavicles. Notice that he neglects to mention when Schrodinger won the prize. You know when he got it? in 1933, a full four years before G.P. Thompson got it for confirming the wave nature. But if you listen to what Hegde says, you'll feel like uh, Schrodinger said their wavicles before uh, G.P. Thompson said their waves. Because it wouldn't make sense otherwise, right? I mean, he can't say uh, that their wavicles before someone else says their waves. Right? The truth is, Erwin Schrodinger didn't win the Nobel Prize for saying that. He won the prize for the Schrodinger wave equation, which helps you find the wave function of uh, subatomic particles. None of these scientists contradicted each other's findings. They just uh, added on to what each other person uh, had discovered and helped us improve our understanding of the atom. If you listen again to B.M. Hegde's speech, He's clearly researched the years in which these people won the prizes, but he deliberately chose not to include one of the years, and he chose to change the order in which he said all this. This was no honest mistake. This was a deliberate misrepresentation that he did in order to give science, or what he calls Western science, a bad name. He makes small alterations to stories that probably go unnoticed if you just give it a superficial examination to make people distrust science because only then will they buy into his quack ideas and products. To see why he is a quack, I've made a video on him before on the channel. You can go check it out. Now comes Sadhguru, sorry, Captain Pseudoscience with his analysis of the model of the atom. They thought, let's say if this is an atom, big enough for you to see? Okay. If this is an atom, proton, neutron, electron are all embedded in it like these dots. They thought it was like that. Then by the time you came to high school, they wrote a different picture. They wrote one central circle which contains proton, neutron and electrons are going around like planets in different formats. Yes, you've seen those pictures? But now they know it's completely wrong. And we have always known it's completely wrong. 
That's why textbooks never ever interested me because when I look at it, it looked dumb. This is just hilarious as to how wrong this is. The models of the atom are not random guesses that scientists just come up with, as he makes it sound. They are carefully proposed based on the evidence available till then. And it's usually when new evidence comes along that a model changes. Let me show you why everything he says is wrong. First statement. Proton, neutron, electron are all embedded in it like these dots. They thought it was like that. I hope the school that Jaggi studied in has uh, revised what they're teaching their students because this model is completely wrong. He's talking about J.J. Thompson's plum pudding model because that's where we have electrons embedded in a ball of positive charge like, uh, like raisins uh, embedded in a plum pudding. But notice that there are no electrons and protons in this model. Why? Because they weren't discovered back then. This model came out in 1904 and the proton was experimentally discovered in 1917 and the neutron in 1934. And also it's not physically possible for an atom to exist like this because a proton, a positively charged proton and a negatively charged electron, if they're not moving, they will attract each other uh, causing the collapse of the atom. But if you look around, things don't just collapse. So yeah, this model is just plain wrong. And this model was never taught to us as a legitimate model of the atom. We learned how this model was rejected as soon as new evidence came along in the form of Rutherford's gold foil experiment in the same page of the textbook. But you can't expect a man who detests textbooks to know all this. The gold foil experiment showed us that the atom was almost completely empty except for a tiny volume where all its mass was concentrated. And this evidence led to Rutherford and Niels Bohr proposing the Bohr model in 1913. The electrons revolve around a central positively charged nucleus in such a way that the electrostatic force of attraction between them uh, serves as the centripetal force that keeps the electron in orbit, kind of like the Earth's gravity keeps the moon in orbit. But Juggy gets this wrong again because there is no proton and neutron because they still weren't discovered back then. It was just a central positively charged nucleus. But you have to admire the confidence of Juggy when he says his third statement. But now they know it's completely wrong. And we have always known it's completely wrong. This model is not wrong per se. We improved it to a new and better model when new evidence came along. The currently accepted model of the atom is the quantum mechanical model. I think there's this idea that some people just know things. That's not true. You and I are the same. And so is Sadhguru and whoever made this yogic system. Everyone can only know something when there's evidence for it. Of course, they can guess or hypothesize that maybe things are this way, kind of like Einstein did uh, with his theory of relativity initially. But unless there's evidence for what you say, you can't claim that you know anything. In Einstein's case, the evidence that validated what he said uh, was uh, observed by astronomer Arthur Eddington. My objective with this video was not to show that Juggy doesn't know science. We all know that. He just knows how to talk about it confidently. My objective is to expose the sinister idea behind things he says. He says these things in order to get people to mistrust science. If someone hears any scientific criticism of what he says, they must think to themselves, Hey, why should I even trust you? You guys don't even know what you're doing. The same goes for B.M. Hegde. These pseudoscientists will do whatever they can to project a negative image of science. Whether it's by altering stories here and there or twisting facts, please don't fall for this. Please don't buy into the claims that anyone makes unless they also present evidence for it. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, remember, science is dope.